Hey guys, it's Kayla. Welcome back to my channel. Dollar Tree has been adding so many crafting and Cricut dupes to their stores lately, so I am really excited for this video because I'm going to be putting them to the test. All of the products I'm showing here, I'll be testing out and comparing them to my crafting and Cricut products I already own. I'll let you know which ones I think are worth it, which ones will save you money, and which ones I think are not worth purchasing. These are just my own opinions. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments on these items, which ones you've tried out and what you think about them. I hope you enjoy this video. I would love it if you hit the subscribe button and hit the notification bell. It's completely free to subscribe and you won't miss any of my other videos. I also found foil and solid iron-on vinyl that I will be testing out in another video. I already tested out their neon iron-on vinyl, so I can leave a link for that video below. And I found leather the other day too, so I will be doing a video on that, and I will link it in the description box when that's done. The first product I'm testing out is the tape measure. I found this for $1.25. I use these with almost every Cricut project to measure my blanks to help me figure out what size to make my vinyl. I looked on Amazon and found a pack of six tape measures for $4.98, making it 83 cents each. But if you need just one, I would say this is a pretty good price and to pick it up if you see it. I compared it to my tape measure that I always use and it looks like it measures correctly. As you can tell I'm getting really in depth with this video. The next product that I picked up was the mini electric iron. This is in the dollar plus section which is somewhat new. It was $5. I'm probably the most curious about this one. I feel like they are trying to make it look like the easy press mini and they even show on the box that you can use it for heat transfer vinyl and iron on decals. Here I'm just pulling it out of the box and this is kind of a close-up of what it looks like. It is extremely lightweight, which I feel like probably isn't the best thing. To turn it on, you just plug it into the side and plug it into an outlet. Here's what it looks like next to the Easy Press Mini so you kind of get a size comparison. I'm going to test it out on a onesie that I'm making for my niece who's being born soon. I'm using Caesar Heat Transfer Vinyl since it is a really good brand of vinyl. After it's plugged in, you'll see a red dot so you'll know that it is heated up. I go in and run it over my onesie just to preheat it first. Then I'm ready to lay my vinyl down and start pressing it. I decided just to go off of what I normally do with the Easy Press Mini and run it over it for about 25 seconds and I try to do a medium to high pressure over it. After that, I tried taking the vinyl off. It literally didn't stick at all. So I decided to try a different technique just to press it down in one spot and hold it for quite a while and see if that would help. I tried this in multiple spots, even the bottom, I didn't show it here, but no matter how hard I tried, it just completely lifted off. It would not adhere whatsoever. On the tag, it says it reaches over 230 degrees Fahrenheit, and I just think it's not hot enough, so I wouldn't pick this up for vinyl transfers. If you found a use for it, let us know in the comments. For my next project, I literally had to dust off my Cricut Joy because I haven't gotten it out in forever, but I found permanent writable white sticker paper, so I am super excited to try this. On the side, it says not for use with inkjet printers, so you don't want to use it with printable vinyl. It also says create your own labels using pens and ideal with cutting machines. They make this similar to the Cricut Joy Smart Label Writable Vinyl. That is a mouthful, but they're both the exact same size, 5.5 inches by 48 inches. The Dollar Tree version is $1.25, and the Cricut version right now on Amazon is $3.89. I decided to load the material without a mat, just like the Cricut Joy material does, and that worked exactly the same. The Cricut will draw, then cut out the label that I put together in Design Space. I did the writable setting, and I should have done less for pressure, otherwise it cut it out fine. Here's what it looks like. After about five minutes, I pressed up against it, and it smeared it. So then I waited an entire day, and it is still smearing. So I didn't want to give up there. I decided to try it out with a permanent marker and my pen adapters. 
If you have a Cricut warranty, which would be the first year of owning your Cricut, and you place anything non-Cricut related in your machine, and it breaks, it voids the warranty. So I always like to warn people about that before you add anything into your Cricut machine. Here's the test. It does not smear at all with permanent markers. So I was actually shocked by that. That's exciting. You just want to be able to use your Cricut Joy and you need an adapter for your machine. Moving on to the glue gun pad. I thought this was a really good find for $1.25. My glue gun does have a little drip area for it, but I think I would still use this a lot. It's made out of silicone and I can actually see me using it when I'm painting to put underneath whatever project I'm using. And it's kind of nice that it's not too big of a size. I can just roll it up and place it in my craft room. I found insert card sets that look exactly like the Cricut Joy insert cards. So I'm really excited to try these. They say 12 piece, but they really make four cards. So you get a set of four for $1.25. On Amazon, Cricuts range from around four to seven dollars for a 12 pack. That makes the Dollar Tree ones 31 cents each and the Cricut ones around 33 to 66 cents. So a little cheaper at Dollar Tree. So I'm excited to see how it works. I'm testing this out with my Cricut Joy. I'm also using my Cricut Joy card mat. I place it into that and it fits exactly like the Cricut ones. Also the material of the cardstock just looks identical to it. I chose a project from Cricut Design Space and when you choose that project, you just select the card size, which is 4.25 by 5.5. And all I have to do is click make it. I don't have to adjust the size at all. So it's very easy to make these cards. The Cricut will draw then cut the card. If you have an Explorer or Cricut Maker, Cricut made a card mat that works for those. So you can make these type of cards with that as well. Once it's done, I remove it and it looks like it sized it exactly where it should be. Then I add the gold insert card into the card. Here's how it turned out. Absolutely beautiful. It worked perfectly. This card is so pretty and I cannot tell a difference between this or Cricut's. So I would highly recommend picking this up from Dollar Tree. Next, I picked up some cardstock packs. I completely forgot to show this in the intro, but here's one of them, and it just comes with an assortment of different cardstock. Honestly, I wasn't too impressed with the cardstock. It just didn't seem like the quality was that great, so I probably wouldn't purchase one of these again, but I did find 12 by 12 cardstock that I will show here in just a second. It's totally up to you though. For $1.25, you might get some use out of these. Let me know if you've picked it up and if you've created anything with them. Here's one of the 12 by 12 packs of cardstock that I found. It is a pack of five and it comes with an assortment of colors. Here's the different colors that came in the pack. I'm not sure what the paper weight is for these cardstock, but it felt similar to 65 pound, which is what I like to typically use when I am using cardstock with my Cricut. Here's a different pack that I found with five different colors. Michaels has some 12 by 12, 100 sheet packs of an assortment of colors for around $20, but there's always a coupon for it, making it around $13. So that makes each sheet 14 cents each, which is obviously a better deal. However, Michael's individual sheets of cardstock is 99 cents. I also found a five pack of glitter cardstock for $1.25, which I was super excited about. That makes them 25 cents each. The glitter cardstock at Michael's is more expensive. I found some 24 sheet packs for almost $30. They were on sale for about $21, making it 87 cents each. I forgot to look at the individual glitter sheets at Michael's, so I can't remember how much they cost, but I would definitely pick up the glitter cardstock again. It's so pretty. I'll test out both of these on the Cricut machine later, but they all cut out really well on the Cricut. The next item I found is the rotary cutter, and this was $1.25. The one I already have is a Cricut one. It's 60 millimeters and the Dollar Tree one is 28 millimeters. I looked online at the Amazon 28 millimeter roller cutters and they were around eight to $12. I like that this has that protective cover over it like the other ones and I decided to test it out with one of the cardstock pieces that I got at Dollar Tree and this is a pretty thick cardstock piece and it cut through it really well. I also decided to try it with felt and it cut right through that. 
I'm not sure how long it'll last, but for $1.25, I would pick it up again. Next, I'm going to test out multiple materials by making a shaker card. I'll be using the double-sided tape. This was $1.25 for 0.3 inches by 33 feet. On Michaels, they have 0.25 inches by 33 feet, which is $2.99, so this is a great deal. For the next one, this is a double-sided foam mounting tape. They call it pop dot tape, which is amazing for card making. It comes with a three size multi-pack, which is awesome. It's hard to do a price comparison, but to me, I feel like that's a really good deal for $1.25. I also found these pop dot adhesives. They have circle and square, which is also great for card making. I looked on Amazon and they were kind of similar in price, but I would definitely pick this up too. I'll also be using this glitter that I found at the dollar plus section for $3. I love that it has a variety of glitter, so I'm excited to try it out. I'm also using the 12 by 12 cardstock that I got from Dollar Tree. I'm curious how this cuts out. I've had cardstock that doesn't cut very well in rips, so we'll see how it goes. I forgot to show this with my supplies, but I also found this embossing tool and I thought I could try it as a scoring tool for my card. I'm going to put it inside my Cricut. I decided to take the grip off and see if I can make it work in the clamp A. I pressed it into it and I just kind of pressed it down. I had to kind of guess where to put it. It honestly made me a little nervous pressing this into my machine because I do not want to break it, but if you feel nervous about it, just don't even give it a try, but we'll see how this works. Here it's doing the scoring and it kind of worked. You can see a little bit of the fold there, but honestly, I would invest in either the scoring wheel if you have the Cricut Maker or a scoring stylus instead of using this. I really don't know that much about embossing, so are you using this tool for that? Let us know if you are in the comments. I didn't find this at the Dollar Tree, but I'm using Cricut Acetate for my shaker card. I'm also cutting out the black glitter cardstock. Look how beautiful this is. I love it. I'm using the glitter cardstock setting for it. Let's see how it cut. The Cricut cut it out perfectly. There was no snagging. Also, the white cardstock, I did medium cardstock for the cut setting, and that cut out really well. Now I'm ready to assemble the shaker card. I'm using the double-sided tape to tape the acetate to this. I would go back and use glue next time because it's so thin there that you can see the tape through it. This was also my first shaker card that I ever made, but I've made more recently and I actually have a video dedicated to this, so I will post it down in the comments and I loved how that one turned out. However, the double-sided tape worked really well for the price. I would definitely pick it up again. Next, I'm going to use the foam tape. I use this around the whole diamond area, and this is what will contain the glitter. This card makes it a little tricky to add the foam tape, so what I did was cut it in half, and that made it a little bit thinner and easier to add it to the card. I took the backing off the foam tape before adding the glitter, but next time I would leave that on because glitter can easily stick to it when the backing is off. Then I'm just ready to add the glitter. I really like this container because when you twist it, it has a hole over whatever glitter you're using, so it works really well. Then I add the cardstock on top, and here's how this turned out. The glitter is sticking to that double-sided tape, so I decided for the video, I just really wanted to make one more to get it right. Here I'm using Barely Art Glue to add glue along the edge, then I add the acetate on top of that. Then I added foam tape. It looks a little funny because I had to cut it so thin, but now you can see nothing through that clear acetate. It looks a lot better. I add my glitter, then I'll remove the backing of that foam tape, but in the future, I will definitely be picking up more of the foam tape, the pop dot tape, and the double-sided tape, and the glitter. And this one definitely turned out better. The glitter can actually move around now. Next, I'm excited to try out these metal flakes. They have this gold color. They also had this rose gold color and silver. I didn't end up picking up the silver though. I picked up this metal leaf adhesive from Michaels and that is how I'm going to apply this. I am going to add it to this acrylic piece. I'm going to use it as a graduation gift tag. I add glue to my paintbrush and just run it along where I want the gold flakes to be. This is a paintbrush I had at home, but Dollar Tree does have paintbrushes. I should have picked those up to give those a try too. Once that's done, I'm ready to add the metal flakes. I just pick up some pieces and place it over the glue. 
The metal flakes do stick to your fingers pretty easily. When I'm done with that, I take my paintbrush and I just run it over the gold flakes. I looked on Amazon to try to compare other gold metal flakes and it was hard to compare because there are so many different sizes and prices, but for this container you get 6 grams and look how gorgeous it is. It's so pretty and it looks like a good price. After that, I take white paint and I paint directly over those gold flakes. I did have to do a couple coats since this is white. I do think Dollar Tree might have paint. I should have tried that out as well, but I'm using my Apple Barrel paint that from Walmart that I already had at home. I'm also using the Dollar Tree glue gun pad to uh, protect my surface from the paint. And you can see earlier, I took a wipe and it just wiped the paint right off. Next, I'm going to add vinyl to the other side of the acrylic. So I was shocked when I found this weeding collector from Dollar Tree for only $1.25 because I have the iVine berry as you can see here and this was almost $10 on Amazon. So if you see this, definitely pick it up. I placed them both on the table and I honestly felt like the Dollar Tree worked even better. I also picked up this piercing and scoring tool set. Let me know what you would use this for, but I'm going to use it as a weeding tool. I normally use a pin pin. If you watch my channel, you'll know that. So this looked kind of similar. Here's the pin pin tool that I use. My pin pin tool is almost $8, so I'm curious how this will work. This final looks bigger on the screen, but it was actually pretty tiny pieces and it was a script font. So here I'm putting this to the test and oh my gosh, I was completely shocked. It worked so perfectly. When you have to get in between those little letters to weed it out, it's very difficult. And this worked great. It worked exactly like my pen pen tool did. My weeding collector was sticking down really well, but a little hack if yours isn't, put a little bit of water on the bottom and that works really well. I'm adding my little gold pieces. I like to use my Cricut tweezers for this. It makes it very easy. Now I'm ready to add my vinyl to the acrylic. I turn it around and add it to the opposite side from where I added the paint and gold flakes. And here I'm just removing that protective cover. This is my first metal foil flake project and look how beautiful it is. Finally, I'm adding my transfer tape to my vinyl and then I will add that to my acrylic. I'm using this as a graduation gift tag, but afterwards the graduate can use it as a bookmark or just kind of keep it as a keepsake. I am obsessed with how it turned out. It is just so pretty. So I would definitely recommend the foil metal flakes. Lastly, I'll be testing out these metallic markers. They're $1.25 each, and I do feel like on Amazon, if you buy a bigger pack, each marker would be a little bit cheaper, but I wanna test this out and see if this will work in the Cricut machine. Before using these on the Cricut, I wanted to test it out on a darker piece of cardstock. I wish I had black because I think it would look cool on an even darker piece, but here's how they look. They are very pretty. I'm going to use my pen adapters again. The only one that worked with it was the letter D. For this first one, I completely forgot to show me adding it in the Cricut machine, but I will show it for the next one. But this draw really well, and now I'm adding it to my machine. I do have to press that clamp down pretty tight. So once again, it's up to you if you want to use these adapters. I personally have never had any issues with them though. These worked really great with the Cricut. I will leave a link for the pen adapter in my description box. That is it for the Dollar Tree video. I had so much fun putting this together. Let me know your thoughts on these Dollar Tree items, and I hope that you enjoyed this video as well.